Welcome back everyone. We're going to learn today how to build out a minimal viable product for an artificial intelligence integrated SaaS that requires little to no code. This is a great tool to learn. This is a great method to learn as this just isn't public information. I've never seen this really taught on the internet as this is a new field, but also this kind of clues you in and gives you the ability to start at least going down the track of building out an artificial intelligence integrated SaaS as you're going to be able to play around with Zapier here. And I'm going to show you how to build out our MVP today. Okay, so if you're familiar with this channel, we do a lot of stuff with automation. We do a lot of stuff with artificial intelligence, chat GPT and stuff of this nature. And one thing I've been talking about a lot recently is building out AI SaaSes. But in order to even entertain that idea, you do need a coding background. But there is ways we can start entertaining it early on so we can kind of get an idea of the type of ideas we'd want to build out once we're ready. And this is using Zapier's front end. This is an amazing way to do this. This is actually how we got our way when we built out our AI SaaS. We built our first, you know, first way and method of building out our SaaS through Zapier just to prove that to ourselves that essentially there is ways we can produce. There is ways this provides value and stuff of this nature. So let's go to learn why Zapier is so powerful at this and what to do when you have an idea and how to approach that. So if you're familiar with this channel, you know we have a marketplace, pre-built automations. We're going to be looking at this automation today, which will be AI meeting notes. What you want to understand when building out an MVP in the context of AI SaaS is you're using this as a sandbox with a limited amount of code to see what the potential output could look like. So as we know, with Zapier, we integrate with over 6,000 apps now, and we're able to do a lot of cool stuff with them with a lot of cool tasks, right? So Google Drive, you know, we have actions, we have, um, you know, actions and, uh, you know, triggers, stuff of this nature. These in itself can be done of code. So I don't need Zapier. In theory, I could code out a whole file and a whole project to do what's being shown here. But that would require me to do a little bit extra work rather than just doing a simple trigger or a simple action. Therefore, that's why Zapier is an amazing platform to build out MVPs when it comes to AI SaaS. Because the most important thing you need to understand when building out SaaS with artificial intelligence is a lot of that SaaS could have possibly been built out years ago as we would have had access on the AI, uh, API of Google Drive or Google Docs in this case. We'd have had access to everything, but the most important thing that we didn't have access to years ago was ChatGPT and this AI model. Therefore, this gives you the ability to start messing around with prompts in this kind of UI to see what possible outputs, what possible value you can provide to an uncustomer so in this context, what this does is that post call in a Google Meet, Zoom, or whatever meeting software you use will take that transcript and will use AI to find the relevant information, the question and answers found in that call, and the statement of work. So let's go to dive in a little bit more here and break down what we kind of mean by that. This allows us to call upon OpenAI's API in a nice UI way that allows us to give perspective on what the possible output be. Out Put could be for a underlying consumer here. So for example, find relevant information in the transcript. If I come down here, I can go ahead and say, just test this step real quick. And we can see in theory what it would look like in code, but on Zapier's front end, which is really nice for us to understand in a, you know, starting off for an MVP. Now I want to make this very clear though. There is a difference on outputs. Now it's not really, really drastic, but it is drastic enough where the outputs will be slightly different between actually using it in a code file comparative to using it in Zapier's front end. But that's the whole point of MVP. You're not necessarily getting your finished product. You're just seeing what's, what this is going to be your sandbox to see what is you know possible and the potential in this underlying field. Knowing this, what we can do here is we can set up a lot of functions and a lot of actions for an end conversion point. So the end conversion point here is AI meeting notes post transcript. Maybe I make a SAS, but the entire purpose is I'm going to give you AI notes that, you know, we can maybe add value later on. But the point being is that this is an MVP. We've gotten some prompts that we understand work well in Zapier. We could probably translate them a little bit in a context of code, but we've officially built out an MVP here in the context of a potential AI SAS. This is really cool. Uh, the ability to do this with no basically little to no code is you know very fundamental although i want to point out a couple stuff here so as we know when uh, we are accessing events through uh, zapier all it's doing is accessing api documentation uh, so specifically this is api documentation for google drive here um, you know you can do a bunch of tasks here first 
two things I want to point out here that are really, really important for you to understand. First thing you need to understand is that Zapier does not do every single thing that is found in this documentation. What do I mean by that? I mean that there is a chance here, for example, let's say uh, comments create. Zapier might not be able to do this action. Zapier might not be able to do Git. It is limited on what it can do in the context of actions and triggers as it probably only chose what it was relevant or what was most demanded on its platform at the time. The second thing you need to understand is that this is fine in most contexts as what you can do is you can simply add another block here. We can do Google Drive and this, you know, we're getting a little bit more in your code, but this then gives you a better understanding of how to approach it. We can come down here and do an API request. An API request, uh, I'm going to link a video up there showing you how to deal with API requests. This is kind of the raw code version with a nice UI of accessing the underlying documentation found here. Therefore, in theory, if you're dealing with other software, pass Google Drive, any software found in their entire list, all over 6,000 apps, you could, in theory, do a lot of complex stuff past the underlying triggers and actions that are afforded by Zapier by simply dealing with, you know, uh, webhooks in the context of API. And as you see, you even give a link here. So I'm gonna go to make sure to link that up there so you can kind of understand how to deal with API requests. If you're familiar with this channel, you know our six month roadmap where essentially you're spending probably the first three months learning how to just use this with no code. Then the next two months, you're gonna get comfortable with API requests and how to communicate with a little bit of code in the context of automations. And then the final leg there, you can finally start entertaining the idea of a ASS because now you're intuitively understanding what's occurring here because all that's happening here in the context of if I were to translate this into a code file in a SAS is, for example, uh, these three blocks here. All that is in the context of a code file is going to be three different files for three different use cases for that SAS. And the way we kind of structure that in code is that we would have it so that there'd be one prompt in that one code file. We would send it, uh, depending on the database you use. So in this context, let's say we're using Firestore database, Firebase uh, on Google's products. Uh, we would send the underlying output to a database point of that underlying user that's been authenticated and then kind of proceed from there, kind of passing around the bill until we get our end conversion point, which in this context would be a file. So the way we translate that a little bit further here for an MVP is that yes, maybe on your MVP, the way you trigger it is a Google Drive and you just simply drag and drop the file in your Google Drive and you kind of proceed from there. Although translating that into a SaaS project, an AI SaaS project that can do this automatically and give very low barriers of, you know, how do I say this, uh, friction. You know, you wanna make it as easy as possible, as seamless as possible. An individual could, all they would need to do is either authenticate their Google Meets or authenticate their Zoom, or whatever they use as a meeting software. I wanna be clear here though, when I say authenticate, all that is doing is giving access to uh, the user is giving access to certain scopes. And what I mean by scopes is certain abilities within the software and giving just you access, right? So it's not like, for example, like if there's a random YouTube channel, you know, you can't access certain things as it's gatekeep for security reasons. But in the context of building out a SaaS, this door will open up when a user is authenticated on your platform. That's kind of the process on Zapier. When you add a new app and you give the login and it says connected, you're giving Zapier authentication. One other thing I want to point out here is that in the context of doing a API request, like I showed earlier here, notice uh, it says that you're already authenticated. So this is really, really powerful for MVPs because you don't have to deal with an authentication token and a refresh token. This is authenticated automatically in their backend, in their system. This allows you to play around with it uh, as you will with leisure. One thing I want to point out as well, <laughs> and there's a lot of nuance here. But this is why uh, an MVP on Zapier is so powerful because you don't have to deal with this yet. But one thing I'll point out as well is when you go to the next leg here and you build out a uh, SaaS using code, there is going to be uh, that authentication comes with how do I quote unquote get access? What's your key? That's your access token. Access tokens, depending on the platform, expire on different duration levels, depending on how high the security is. In the context of Google's API, that expires every hour. Therefore, you'd have to set up some type of logic where every hour you'd refresh the token. That gets into a little bit more complex stuff here. But on the bare minimum, that's why Zapier is such a powerful MVP platform because you don't have to deal with that either. You are just dealing with the end conversion event of what value you provide. So here, it'd be the AI notes, the transcript, stuff of this nature. Now, one other thing you should understand 
And so we understand that Zapier is limited to the triggers and actions associated with each software. Okay. We also understand that if it is limited, we could potentially use webhooks and what they call your API request in order to access certain events that may be not on the front facing available on Zapier's front end. And what I mean by that is like, let's say I'm trying to find a specific event here. See, they only give four, right? So maybe there's another type of event you want to do here other than these four, you would do an API request. But saying that there is one very, very important thing you need to understand that probably not a lot of document, not, probably a lot of, not, not a lot of information on this, um, depending on your platform, depending on the software you use, even doing an API request can be limited. So what I mean by that is there is certain actions and there is certain triggers that not even, not even Zapier has access to. So the way this works is Zapier every single one of their apps, they, they have a relationship with the underlying software provider. So for the entire Google suite, they have a relationship with Google where Google affords them certain amount of authentication or quota usage per app. And Google basically, you know, green lights that you have the ability to have this many users or have access to this many users backends or software. I don't know what their cap is, but I assume it is extremely large. But here's the thing. Google knows with the pretext, and this applies to all software, but Google knows by giving Zapier the ability to uh, do all these actions, but at a large scale, because I can do the action of new file and folder, and so can you do the action of new file and folder. So this is like, a lot of people can do this, right? So once you get authentication, a lot of people can do this. Google knows this. Therefore, the certain actions and triggers that Google will afford Zapier is actually gonna be constrained as they don't want certain actions and um, certain actions and abilities to be afforded at scale. So what I mean by that essentially is, I'll give a different example here. Let's say uh, for Instagram, right? We have access to their API in the context of publishing photos. We have access to their API in the context of, I think like new photo and post, you know, very limited access. That's because that in theory, Instagram does have the API to upload a video but they don't want to afford that ability at scale. Instagram has the ability at API to post a comment on a post, but they don't want to afford that at scale. So what are the, some of the reasons why they would do that? So for the example of Instagram and the comment, they wouldn't want to give Zapier that much leeway on the ability to then have all of its users. I have no clue how many people use Zapier. I, I'm assuming over hundreds of thousands. So imagine Zapier gives the green light from Instagram Instagram uh, authentication for publishing comments is now afforded to all 100,000, however many people use Zapier uh, client base, which leads the door open to a potential of a lot of spam, potential for a lot of harm towards the platform. Therefore, they gatekeep it. Can't do that, not allowed at scale. But that is where it gets very interesting when developing a SaaS platform. As Big companies like Zapier may be gatekeeped out of giving of or affording certain actions when it comes to certain softwares. But if you develop your own software um, and you are in the process of dealing with the underlying company that is the software itself, the that company could afford you access to that specific uh, action or that specific API request that they wouldn't afford Zapier. E.g., they would gatekeep certain actions from Zapier, but they wouldn't gatekeep it from you. Why is that? That's because they know if they give you access to that API action, they understand that it isn't like you get authentication and then, you know, 20,000 people also get authentication along with it. Therefore, there is less harm or less risk associated with potential exploitation of that API specific action or trigger. Knowing this, depending on the use case of your platform, of course, you'd have to go through some hoops. This gives you an extremely big competitive advantage in the market due to the fact that now you are not only you, you are essentially protected from big companies and you're protected from potential competitors because there is certain hoops and windows you have to jump through in order to get access to certain types of API documentation. I don't know if that was a little bit of a rant there. That was a ton of information I know, but that's very important for you to understand past just making the MVP of why this is all pretty important in the context of long term. But all I can really suggest you to do is look through Zapier apps, understand how to start proctoring with ChatGPT. This is going to allow you to build an MVP with 
without having to do anything I just described there, you can really just jump into the MVP. Let's just see what value we can get out of here and then kind of proceed from there. But I kind of want to leave you on this as everything I just described there near the latter half when I was describing limits to API documentation and how Zapier even gets gatekeeped out of certain posts and requests. Even if you do an API request, they, they still don't allow you know Zapier to do certain functions that afford it to their customers. This is important for you to know because they are gatekeeping for a reason. There's probably only going to be a few companies that get access to certain functions within certain software companies. What that means for you is that, as I've stressed on this channel multiple times before in the past, this isn't an opportunity that's going to be here for that long. I have always said probably next one to three years, probably two to three years, if we're going to be a little, a little bit nice to ourselves. But at a certain point, you got to look at the company's perspective. You got to look at the company that's affording you maybe a high risk API documentation, high risk get and post documentation. Their perspective is very much if there's three companies that satisfy the market, why would I add an extra seven for the underlying task? More risk, more overhead to deal with. If I'm going to afford you the ability to publish videos on Instagram using our API, you better be a good company and you better have value. And I'm saying right now, this is a once life opportunity, once in a lifetime opportunity, because it's the only time we've ever been able to do in the last nine months, the ability to integrate artificial intelligence at such a high level of GPT-4. Someone got to put that on a song, but without further ado, if you felt like you learned value in today's video, make sure to leave a like. If you want more talks like this, check out the playlist at the end here, where I'm discussing more stuff of this nature, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.